Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this redgamingtech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up the past 24 or so hours. I hope you're all having an amazing day. We're going to be kicking this video off with news concerning the Xbox Scarlet, specifically revolving around the performance of the a Lockhart model of the system and supposed target specifications of both Anaconda and Lockhart. Anaconda, of course, being the more powerful of the two rumored SKUs. So we're going to start things out with some comments from Jason Schreier, who is, of course, a well-respected journalist over at Kutaku. He was recently on the Split Screen podcast from Kotaku. I'll, of course, link it in the description of the video. I'm going to read out a quote verbatim. The way it's been described to me, he says in reference to both of the machines, I think that Lockhart is going to have significantly less RAM. I want you to bear in mind that phrase, significantly less RAM, as it's going to be pertinent to another rumor that I want to discuss in a moment. But the CPU makes a big difference especially when it comes to frame rate. The SSD also makes a huge difference when it comes to loading time. So I think what developers can do is knock down the texture quality and take a hit to the resolution, but they don't have to sacrifice frame rate as much. So that's actually quite interesting. There have been some other rumors also from um, Jason Schreier that the GPU performance of this machine is roughly on par with the PlayStation 4 Pro. Although, of course, they are using very different generations of GPU. Uh, obviously, with the Xbox, it's using a variant of RDNA. So, yeah, when it comes to T-flops, it's very difficult to make a like-for-like -like comparison. However, this does tie in rather nicely, as I mentioned a moment ago, to another rumor that's been floating around the internet. Uh, Fatal Enigma has actually uh, put a screenshot on Twitter. He himself said he doesn't believe this is accurate although it is from a supposed insider, and quite a lot of people have been discussing this on the usual forums, so I wanted to throw my couple of pennies into this equation because I do see several things wrong with this particular supposed leak. The first of which is you can see that the amount of RAM in both of these systems is 20 and 24 gigabytes respectively. We can assume that the top well, I guess you could say redacted entry, although it's kind of pointless to redact the name when the uh, specifications make it kind of blindingly obvious of which one's which. But anyway, the top which uh, the top of these, excuse me, is going to be a Lockhart, and it says it has 20 gigabytes of memory. But Jason Schreier has very good uh, insider sources, so I would give the nod to his information quite honestly. Now, yes, four gigabytes is... I guess you could say quite a big cut in RAM, but I don't know if it would be significant. One could make the argument, and it is a pretty compelling one, that we are looking at development kits, which means potentially we could see quite a cut in the final machine, in the final specifications of retail machines. But I don't necessarily think that this is a big enough cut to uh, really explain what Jason Schreier is uh, telling us is happening with developers. Furthermore... And this one, to be honest, is even more damning. Look at the uh, specifications of the GPU. So 800 megahertz and 1.9 gigahertz are the GPU clock frequency. And this means that for the uh, Lockhart, we have a performance figure of 5 teraflops, whereas the Anaconda has 12.4 teraflops. This would mean, if you do the maths on this, 1.9 gigahertz... Uh, would equal to be about 52 compute units for the 12.4 teraflop anaconda. But that would also mean you have essentially identical number of compute units you would need to make the 5 teraflops of Lockhart. And that just doesn't make sense in any rational... It just It's just pointless for them to do that. It would be such a huge die and then just clock it at a really low clock frequency. It, 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 it just is... It, it just... Yeah, it just doesn't really make any sense for them to do that, to be honest. So I highly doubt that these rumors are accurate. With that said, 1.9 gigahertz for the clock speed of the GPU, even if this rumor isn't accurate, I can see being true because we know that the PlayStation 5 GPU, uh, we've seen several reports now, of course, from Kamachi on Twitter, plus, uh, well, Tim Apisak has found various leaks and so on and so on. So we do know that the 
uh, PlayStation 5 GPU is hitting around 1.8 to 2 gigahertz, which we can presume, therefore, the Xbox is going to be around the same clock frequency. Next up, I'd like to discuss a report from videocards.com, which actually lends a lot of credibility to a report from WCCF Tech. According to WCCF Tech, we would see a successor for Ampere in the form of a Hopper, which would be a GPU which would probably debut in some point in 2021, at a guess, given what we think Ampere's launch date is, which is going to be in the first half of 2020. Anyway, videocards.com have uh, discovered a patent which has been filed by uh, NVIDIA in the United States for the uh, NVIDIA Hopper architecture. It's only a name, and we don't really know anything about the GPU architecture itself, unfortunately. Frankly, we know very little about Ampere, uh, other than the fact it's going to be produced on the 7NM process. So, the rumours have it that while Ampere is likely going to be pretty significant in its uh, architectural changes over Turing, uh, once again, I'd like to remind you of rumours that I covered a couple of weeks ago. Basically, uh, Ampere is allegedly going to significantly improve ray tracing performance along with traditional rasterization performance, potentially have considerably more uh, memory as well. But basically, the main purpose of Ampere is to fix the weaknesses on the ray tracing performance. That's what the rumours are. But Hopper is going to be possibly more significant. And the reason behind that is it's going to take an MCM approach. So multi-chip module. If you're not familiar with that, you can basically think Ryzen 3000, slash Zen 2 chiplets. So multiple dies will come together to form a whole. We have seen NVIDIA actually experiment with that already internally. And obviously, uh, AMD are, well, using this very technology to incredible success with processors like Epic. So naturally, GPUs are also going to follow the same suit. In fact, we kind of think that Intel are going the same direction with XE as well. And AMD themselves have said that they are researching the technology. But, of course, it's not been seen with the first generation of Nave processors or graphics processors. It's going to be fascinating, though, because in a couple of years' time, we could have tremendously powerful GPUs with comparatively impressive yields because obviously that's one of the benefits of chiplets unfortunately we don't know enough at the moment of what nvidia are planning with hopper uh, because well quite frankly there is so little information about what uh, their graphics roadmap is internally nvidia are really good at keeping secrets i don't know if they've been trained to do so by like the fbi or something but those guys are just really good at uh, making sure that things don't go into the wild. So yeah, it would be very interesting to see whether this technology finds its way down to GeForce, or whether this would be in the realms purely of, let's say, Quadro at the start, and then maybe a year or two later on, it would eventually come down to the GeForce cards. But either way, it's going to be fascinating to see what NVIDIA wants to do. We know that Intel, the rumors have it, that with Ponte Vico, anyway, they're going to be targeting NVIDIA's flagship technology, primarily with high-performance computing. And we all know that NVIDIA, they don't really like competition. <laughs> they really want to stay on top because, obviously, uh, high-performance computing is so ridiculously lucrative at the moment. Data sets, the size of data sets is becoming exponentially bigger as well. So it's going to be imperative for them to ensure that they have as much performance on tap as possible. So, yeah. Unfortunately, this is one of those things we're going to have to wait at least a year, probably two years, for us to really know what NVIDIA are planning. But I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, the future what the future holds with MCM type of GPUs. I'd also like to bring your attention to a rather fascinating leak by um, AMD themselves, actually, funnily enough. Uh, they probably made a mistake because the current driver actually 
advertises a feature which is going to be upcoming for Adrenaline 2020, which is obviously an upcoming driver update. They basically are touting a new feature called a Radeon Boost, as well as, of course, the Adrenaline 2020 edition itself, which is also in and of itself a leak. But there's very little information of Radeon Boost and what it could be. However, there are a couple of reports that it's based on High Eagle Boost technology. Now, AMD themselves acquired this company around two or three years ago, I believe, and they have already implemented the Chill technology. Obviously, we've heard a lot about Radeon Chill. In fact, a lot of AMD's press statements and even their review guides really push Radeon Chill. Trust me, they are not chilling on Radeon Chill. They absolutely love the darn thing. But in terms of what the High Algo Boost does, it's basically a frame-by-frame optimizer. It essentially is adaptive resolution. And before anyone groans, yes, if you're running a really high-end GPU, if you're running like a Radeon 7 or an RX 5700 XT or whatever, you might not want to sacrifice image quality. But this is going to be really nice for budget gamers, APUs, and also if you are wanting just a little bit of additional performance. So what it basically does, from what we understand anyway, assuming this technology is the underlying uh, feature that is Radeon Boost is it basically inter- intercepts uh, commands which are sent f- from the game to the graphics card, basically the instructions, and then optimizes them on a frame by frame basis. So if you are in an action scene and let's say the frame rate dips below the target, let's say that you set a target uh, frame rate of 60 FPS, well, it will dynamically scale the resolution. So what the limits are of that resolution scaling, for example, let's say that you're targeting 1080p, is it going to go down to 720p, and so on and so on, we're not certain about that. One of the examples that HiAlgo gives is primarily regarding cameras, because if you are running a camera, typically it's kind of like there's going to be a little bit of blurring and stuff, motion blur, so you're going to be less sensitive to drops in resolution. In theory, anyway, this should provide... Uh, better responsiveness in games, and once again, better performance, which is the main the main benefit of this. We are actually seeing this implemented, or variants of this in games already, like Gears 5 has a minimum frame rate target, and if the game senses, oh, well, look, they've set the, resol- sorry, the frame rate to be like 60 FPS, and even a, an RTX 2080 Ti, really struggles with Gears 5 in some uh, scenes, some areas, to maintain 60 FPS, so sometimes it will dip below 4K native. And someone, who may or may not be me, has a couple of times forgotten to turn that off when benchmarking, so that's been fun to redo benchmarks on Gears 5. Like, why is the RX 5700 getting 60 FPS at 4K? That seems a bit weird. Uh, yeah. But anyway... Hopefully, you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. And I'd also like to remind you that I've recently put out a core count scaling and DirectX 11 versus DX12 versus Vulkan uh, video, so if you would like to go ahead and check that out, it would be extremely appreciated, uh, because quite frankly, I'm pretty damn proud of the video. So it's been doing pretty well, but still, I'm going to plug it anyway because, well, I'm a YouTuber, so that's kind of like my job, right? Plug, 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 plug. Anyway, take care of yourselves.